Welcome to the Spa Retailer Podcast, where we talk about retail, business, and all things related to the hot tub industry. Here's your host, Megan Kendrick. Welcome to the Spa Retailer Podcast. I am here again with Danielle from My Retail Coach. And Danielle's newest article in the magazine about the ultimate shopping experiences is really interesting. And it's something that kind of touches on how retail is changing in general and the things that you need to be paying attention to now to kind of stay on top of what customers want. So Danielle, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you, Megan. So let's kind of, let's dive into this um, about the the ultimate shopping experience and, and what customers expect from when they visit your, your business. Sure. So consumers today and, and the millennials are, are, are even more um, geared towards having an experience, but consumers today are so geared towards how you make them feel. You know, the touchy feely experience is extremely important and it starts with your online presence uh, and just let's use an example throughout this whole podcast, maybe so people can relate. Let's just use, you know, going to a restaurant because we can all relate that if we go to a restaurant and, and I want to preface this, but it doesn't need to be a five star restaurant. It could be a hole in the wall. It, it can be, you know, a, a diner. If we go to a restaurant, the, you know, the first thing is, is the appetizer. How did we find the restaurant? So we went online. We, you know, looked for maybe, you know, the top, the top five Italian restaurants in Chicago and pop up, you know, pops these, these research results. And right away, we have an impression. We feel a certain way about that listing. So either it made us feel good or bad, but we have a feeling about those those five restaurants, and we'll click on those pri- you know the, the the initial search results and go to their websites and kind of look at the website. And if it's really bad, within seconds, I'm not talking a minute or two, within seconds, two seconds you'll click off of that and move on to the next one. If you don't have, again, a good feeling, the experience that you portray, the feeling that you give, the impression that you give on your search results. But that includes, again, I'm going to go back to your Google search result, right? Because if they're using Google search, um, that whatever's on your Google Maps is going to pop up, so it better be pristine and really, really interesting and good. The second one is your website and your Facebook page. They have to be pristine because the customer's going to get this really, this feeling, this feeling about you before they even go into the store. And there's uh, there's an actual study, and we'll, maybe we can touch on it towards the end of the article, Megan, but there's a study that shows that Consumers by 2020 will be so geared towards the ultimate shopping experience, how you make them feel from the minute they find you online through your after sales service, that this experience is going to trump, is going to become more important than pricing or product. And I can't stress that enough, right? It's going to trump pricing or product. So saying you're the best is no longer good enough. It's so interesting because I think your dealers are so focused on products and pricing and it's hard to, it's hard to get away from that, but, but it's true. I mean, I see that in my life and in how I shop, um, you know, if I will go somewhere more expensive, if I enjoy being in that environment and I enjoy working with those people and the, and being around those employees, um, then going somewhere cheaper. I mean, and it sounds a little nuts to say it out loud that I would spend more money to feel good, but I'll do it every time. Exactly. Right. If you, if you have, if you have two choices, um, more and more often, and I have this, I'll actually argue with some of my customers you know, as we, as we, that we coat and I'll argue with them to increase their prices only if 
the experience that the customers will get and the after sales service, the service during the installation and delivery and the after sales service, if they're after sales service and they're, you know, what they do, their installation is more pristine, they keep it clean, their staff is crisp and professional. If that's all better than your competition, you can increase your prices. You absolutely can. And, and, and it goes to, again, let's go back to the restaurants. Your online presence is the appetizer. <laughs> if, if the appetizer is good, we're looking forward to the main dish. If the appetizer is not good, by the time the main dish comes, we're a little leery, right? Sometimes, I mean, I've been in situations where I've gotten up and like this, I'm not, moved, I'm not eating the rest because this is so horrible. So your online presence is your appetizer, the store shopping experience or when people come into the store to buy and becomes your main dish and your after sales service is the dessert and the dessert can make or break a restaurant. <laughs> and if you have just the best, right, if you, if your dessert, if the after sales service is incredible and I mean incredible where customers by themselves give you reviews and referral business on their own without being prompted, that's when you know you you have the ultimate shopping experience. And, and it's funny because in a lot of restaurants, as well as dealerships, the dessert is kind of what gets ignored in a lot of cases. You know, they're, they're so focused on making this wonderful meal for you that you're never going to forget that they don't really put a whole lot of uh, effort into their, their dessert menu. And so, I mean, everyone loves a you know, chocolate lava cake, but you can only eat so many chocolate lava cakes that everyone does because, you know, I mean, it, it gets boring. And so when you surprise people and excite them at your restaurant, as well as in your store, yeah, it can pay, it can pay dividends. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, think of, let's, let's use a spa shopping experience because that's, that's who we're dealing with here, right? So, you know, spa dealers, your, your customers go on your website, or on your Facebook is all I see. I've looked at some of the websites recently and all I see is sale after sale after sale. The whole Facebook page is that's all there is advertisements for sales, right? Free stereo with the spot purchase, free this, free that, or, you know, get $1,500 off. Even their, you know, their website just has just a bunch of, of sale items or, or pictures bad pictures of product. Um, it's not interesting. So you, you have to attract them with a good appetizer. You have to attract them with great pictures and make people drinks. Using a spa, I use my spa almost every day. I mean, my husband and I were, you know, we're, we're spa addicts <laughs> and we, we miss it when we travel greatly. And so but that experience is what you want to try and convey in your app as your appetizer online. You really want to attract customers with a dream, right? Make them dream about the experience they can have. So it's not about showing a close up picture of the skimmer newsflash. Nobody cares. It really doesn't matter. What do they really want? They want an experience. They want a spa in which they're going to have peace of mind and relaxation. So what are what pictures are you showing on your Facebook page? Do you have your customers go in and put pictures of them in their spa with their kids? You know, natural, fun, spur of the moment pictures and testimonials so that other customers can see that and say, I want that life. That's what you're looking for. You want your customers to say, I want that. I want to be laying in my hot tub with a glass of champagne with my husband on a cold winter night. That's what I want. I want the dream. And that's where the consumer research is very important on the, on the, on the front side to even get them to go to your website. And then your website has to be the same thing. Sell the dream. I'm going to give you a little tip here. Your website pages, every single page, should have about 800 words of text. And I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes right now, and Megan probably is as well. <laughs> you write the text for Google. 
if you want to be found by Google, um, you have to have keywords on average three to five keywords per page and you want to mention those keywords about three times per page and your text needs to be about 800 words. Have an intro checklist, um, headers, so you'll need to have a header one for each page and then header two. So you might say, right, on your spa page, right, spas and hot tubs or spas and swim spas, depending on what you're selling. And then you might have, you know, spa models for four people. So that could be a subheader. And then you'll have, you know, your pictures. And you can put all your text at the bottom of the page, these 800 words, or you can intersperse them into little paragraphs here and there. But those those things are what's going to make people even find your website and find, you know, for Google to find you. They Google can't analyze a picture. They don't, it doesn't get it. It sees it as a picture, but it doesn't understand what that picture is for. So you, you write your website, the for Google, um, not for consumers. I mean, it still needs to be interesting, but for the most part, it's Google is going to read it. So that was just a little sidebar there, Megan. <laughs> well, it's you kind of touched on a little bit of a, a pet peeve of mine in the industry is going back to this idea of um, everything being so focused on sales and very little focused on on the experience when you go to someone's website or just anywhere that you read about their their company online, whether it's social media or um, a newsletter or something. It just frustrates me so much because the products that we sell do so much good for people. And I feel like that is just something that's missing from what you see online on your average retailer's website is, you know, you're so focused on the product and you're not selling the experience and people don't care about the product. They care about how it's going to make them feel. They care about what it's going to do for their lives. You know, that's what they're, that's what they're interested in. And so I hate it when I go on these dealer websites, which I look at on a daily basis, trying to find people to talk to. And it's, just so much about, hey, this is on sale and we have these five hot tub brands and, <laughs> you know, they just, they, there's nothing that tells anybody why they'd want to actually buy it. It's just, oh, here's what you can buy. And it just drives me absolutely bonkers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's, I mentioned a research study that, that was done actually quite a few years ago um, by Walker. And this study back, you know, they, they, they did it, like I mentioned a few years ago, they predicted that customer experience would trump price a product. They redid their study just this year, well, actually 2017, and now they're predicting that by 2020, this will actually be in effect. And here's one very scary statistic. 56% of customers who experience, who have a bad experience at a business, never give them a second chance. It, oh, 25, man. I know. And it gets worse. 25% of those people will tell all their friends and family specifically not to go there without being prompted. And 14% of them will badmouth you online. So you could spend 25 years building your reputation and one customer could ruin it for you. So that, that is really scary because you can't, <laughs> you can't make a mistake. So, you know, you can't have a bad day. You can't, you know, have a salesman yeah. who has a cold like I do and doesn't feel like talking <laughs> to a customer. I mean, you just, you, you just can't screw up. It leaves you almost no room for error. Yeah. There's not a lot of room for error, unfortunately. Now, you know, I've seen retailers that have a bad review and consumers, I think, for the most part, are reasonable. They understand when there's this crazy um, customer or that we can have a bad day and we can, you know, not serve a customer well and somebody and we make mistakes. We're humans. You know, we're selling hot tubs. Hot tubs have water, electricity and plumbing. You know, it's like putting your refrigerator in water. Like how well would that do? And so it's something is going to go wrong. What the big difference is, and the, the Walker study shows it again, the, to, con, to really build the ultimate shopping experience, it's okay if you make a mistake. How you handle it is going to make you or break you in the future. So you need to really train your staff to care about the customers as if they were their best friend. This is important now more than ever. I've been 
teaching salespeople that for decades and now more than ever, it is essential that you treat your customers like you would your best friend. And you would not, if you screwed up your work with your best friend, you'd say, Hey Megan, I screwed up. I am so sorry. And you would stay best friends because you would fix it. You need to do the same thing with your customers so that they have an incredible experience from the minute they go on your website until after you sell them a spa and install it because it's not finished. Hot tubs last nowadays, you know, good brands and bad brands, they last you know, 10, 12, 15, 20 years. I've, I've had my hot tub for, for um, it's, I'm going on six years now and I've never fixed anything on it, right? So uh, you keep your customers for a long time. So it doesn't just stop at the install. It, it keeps going. So you, you have to have the best staff who takes care of your customers like they're, they're their best friends to make a difference. And that's, that's what's going to make you or break you in the future. Well, I think that study is such a great reminder of some things that you kind of know in your business about, you know, it's important to take care of the customer, but I think that really drives home why and kind of how things are changing and, and that you just can't, kind of, you can't rest on your laurels. You have to be paying attention to that and working on it hard every day. And so thank you so much for um, sharing that with us and putting it in the article and um, we'll probably talk some more about the customer experience down the road because there are a lot of a lot of things that we could delve into on this topic. But we're going to wrap it up there for now. So thank you so much, Danielle. And thank you for listening to the Spa Retailer Podcast. Thank you, Megan. You've been listening to the Spa Retailer Podcast. You can download previous episodes on iTunes, Google Play, or at sparetailer.com slash podcast. Be sure to download the Spa Retailer app where you can also listen to the podcast and get access to all the magazine articles as well as exclusive content.